This is probably the simplest project that I've ever done on a PCB and um, I ordered the boards from PCB Way. They're sponsoring the video. Thank you PCB Way. And you'll be surprised just how simple yet how useful this little thing can be. Now first of all, as you'll see, I actually ordered 10 boards. And uh, the reason I did that is because for once I think I'll be using all of them. I need this kind of board for multiple uses and I've made it pretty flexible so that I don't need to waste PCBs. So what is this exactly? Well, if you look at the description, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's an Allen 317 DC supply. Probably the simplest thing you can do when you're uh, playing around with electronics. Now, why do I need this? Well, the reason was I wanted to make a small uh, DC power supply run from a battery, probably a nine volt battery. Not exclusively, but it's going to be a 9 volt battery in my case. And I wanted to put it in something this size. And I want it to be completely isolated and I want it to be, well, small. So this thing is going to be uh, the box for it. And it's one of those really, really simple plastic boxes that you get. Ah, nothing special about it. But what this thing is going to have on here is a battery inside, the board, and a little LED voltmeter that costs, well, probably a buck or two. You can get these things just about anywhere. And I'm going to have a little uh, trimmer in here. I'll probably make it um, accessible from the outside so that I can adjust the voltage, see what I'm getting, and I'll have my DC supply. And why do I need this? Well, when I was doing the alignment of the Saba Meersberg 100, I needed to provide 4.5 volts reverse polarity to the AGC line so that... Um, you can actually make all the adjustments without the AGC kicking in. And to do that, what I normally used was the power supply. So I would use the power supply and uh, set it to 4.5 volts and then connect the positive to the, the ground and the negative to the uh, supply uh, point, to the actual AGC point. But that is cumbersome and there's wires floating around and it was just too much hassle. So I ended up doing a little uh, little board where, I'm, where I put in a uh, LM7805 providing 5 volts, put a dropper diode 4.3 uh, volts and that was what I used with a 9 volt battery. Again there was a problem because the battery is actually metal and I couldn't risk just leaving it lying on top there. With something like this I can probably just dump it on top anywhere. If it touches anything there's not going to be a problem and that's what I want to do. The other reason I wanted uh, various boards like this is that I want to rebuild the supply to my over-the-shelf system. Now you probably know that I've got various devices up there. Some of them are actually powered. Most of them are, let's see, the antenna selector is 12 volts, the cap leakage tester is 12 volts. Uh, what else do we have? The receiver, the um, Bluetooth receiver up there is, I think, 9 volts. The idea is I want to create a supply on the bench to provide, say, 20 volts DC or 24 volts DC or 12 volts DC, whatever I decide. And then I'm going to have a bus bar that I can take voltage off and use one of these little boards to adjust the exact voltage that I want. And that's it. I've got myself a uh, adjustable um, supply for each device and it's small enough. And of course, I don't need much uh, in terms of smoothing. The smoothing will happen at the uh, rectification of that main supply. But uh, this thing would just create the voltage that I want and then each device has got their own smoothing internally anyway. So I'll be able to put various boards like this along the bus bar and just tap off whatever voltage I want. There's obviously a disadvantage. Those voltages will be referenced to the same ground point, but that's usually not an issue. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this up and uh, I'll be showing you this device, which will be used as a variable DC supply anyway. I put a switch on here so the battery is going to last a very long time. This will only be used for, well, very simple things. But um, I'll be building it on here, showing you the result. And if this all works well, which I think it will, I'll make these uh, boards shareable on the PCB Way share section. So if you want to do something similar, go ahead. All right, let me get cracking. I'll get all the components together, build this up. And probably the next time you see it, I'll be showing you the final result. Right, here we are. This is all done. I didn't have an Allen 317, can you believe it? So this is a 338, which is the same but for higher current, although I won't need it on this. Everything has been put in place. Everything fits nicely as planned. In fact, the wiring is probably the most complicated stuff that you need to do with these projects. But the boards came out perfectly. 
And now all we need to do is test it. I've got the battery in here. I've got the switch in place. The lengths of wire have got to do with what I'm preparing here. So let's switch it on. Let's uh, see what happens. Oh, this is the wrong way around. 4.52 volts. Okay. And I can adjust it probably till about 9 volt battery. I'm not even sure that it's full, but should be about 7 volts, I think. Well, 6.5. The battery's not new. So we'll get it down here to about 4.5 again. What's that say? 4.52. And what we actually have, let's... Um, what I've done is I've put a resistor here. It's only a 100 ohm resistor, so we've got about, what, 45 milliamps or so? Let's see what we're getting. 4.52 on there, and it's giving us 4.516. Not bad at all. Let's adjust it lower. These meters do not enjoy great precision, but again, don't need it. About 2.7 volts, 2.69. 2.71. Perfect. So, for example, if I was testing a little radio, and recently I needed to do that, I needed, works with two batteries, so three volts, somewhere there, and that would give us pretty damn near three volts, and it says 2.99 down here. So, okay. This is fine. I didn't expect any mysteries, any mistakes, but it's always prudent to check that it works before you put it into a case and, you know, then you have to undo everything. And I prepared this case and the wiring precisely for a particular um, setup that I want in here. Let me show you. I want this to fit like this. I've made the hole for the display over there. I'll be lifting it up and uh, putting it in place with hot glue so it's flush with the surface. I'm going to be putting this, sticking this. I could screw it on, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put some double-sided tape on there, just below. The switch is over here, and I've made the hole there already. And then the battery fits in here, and it does fit, and then the lid just comes on. Now, I need to make two holes for the, um, the output wires. I'm not going to use these. These are just for testing. What I'm going to use are these two. Uh, I've got the crock clips on there. I'm going to drill two small holes on here, just on the side, and those will come out. And then I will solder them in here after I remove these guys. So let me get that stuck and get this in place, and I'll show you the final result. All right, here we are with some uh, really simple graphics, but it's working perfectly fine. On off switch on the side the display over here. We've got our two leads over here. This uh, IC is short circuit protected, so we've got a little bit of uh, protection there. And then here at the back, we've got an adjust button, or rather an adjust screw. You put that in there and you adjust it to whatever you need. Let's, uh, let's see what we want here. You can actually just take the lid off, and I'll show you that in a second, but if you just want to adjust it, you just put it on there, and away you go. You set it to what you want. Say you want to replace two 1.5 volt batteries, 3 volts, and we've got that coming out here. Let me show you the inside. Again, very, very simple. This box doesn't even have screws. It just clips on, and this is what we've got. That's stuck in there with hot glue. And you can see it's flush, which is the way I wanted it. I wanted to put that with double-sided tape. I ended up just using some hot glue as well. I've got the, uh, the leads coming in here, and I put some hot glue there as well, just to give it a bit of uh, a, a little bit of stress relief. You don't need much. On-off switch over here. The wires are pretty short, and uh, that's why I said that I'd measured it accordingly. This battery fits perfectly in here. It won't move. 
Even if it does, it will not short anything because it's really just the perfect size. Look at that. So we put the battery in there and as long as the switch is off, that battery is going to last a very long time. And when you want a DC supply, boom, you've got it. That's it. That's all I wanted to achieve. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to do this uh, to, to get a DC supply that I could use for the, the IF alignment of that Saba. And all the Sabas use them. If you want, you can actually use a trim pot, uh, a better pot rather. You can use one of those small ones, 16 millimeter pots or something like that. And make it perfectly variable by putting the pot in the front. I didn't want that because I wanted to set it and leave it at a particular voltage like what I need there, 4.5 volts. That's good enough, 4.5 volts and I'm good to go. Okay, this thing is plastic so it can touch anything, it won't uh, create any shorts. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a faceplate for this. This is a tool, it's going to be used a lot, not just for Saba alignments but for other stuff when I sometimes need 3 volts or um, you know, I need to replace three 1.5 volt batteries on a test setup, so 4.5 volts. This will do the job. And I'm really happy with the result. But more importantly, I'm happy with these guys because I'm going to use these to create different DC voltages, adjusted uh, voltages for my um, gadgets at the top there. And I will obviously will not be using a meter on those, but I wanted to create the board as, as uh, flexible as possible. These little uh, meters, this is the three wire type. And the reason is that um, if you use a two wire and you measure just the output, it'll only light up after about four volts. I think it's four, 4.5 volts minimum that it needs. So with this uh, three wire, I've got the supply going to the input, so to the battery, and then the yellow wire, which is the sense wire, or the measuring wire that goes to the output. Precision is not a big deal. It's not that great, but it's good enough for my needs. And now I can put this little project aside because this was just a by the way and I can start making my supply for those um, the modules up there. And that's it. That's all I've got to show you today. And I'm uh, thankful to PCBWay for sponsoring the video and the boards. I'll be putting these boards as a shared project on PCBWay's website. If you want to order them, by all means, go ahead. I'll put the link to the share um, in the description below just to make it simpler for you. So once again, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and stay safe.